Today we are going to learn about adding pictures to a Word document. Type or copy and paste a text in, but do not put the text in a text box. The words need to be free to move around in the picture. I've just copied and pasted some conference talks. Go to the Insert tab. You can choose a picture from your file or from the clip art. I will first select one from the clip art. I type in flowers and choose the yellow tulip. The picture will often come in giant size. To reduce the picture, grab the circle in one of the corners to keep the same proportions and reduce it to the desired size. If at any time you can't see the picture toolbar, like on this slide, it is because you have clicked outside of the picture. To get it back, click on the picture. That brings up the Picture Tools Format tab. Then click on this tab. The first thing I want to do is to position my picture. I can click on any position you see in the drop-down box, but I like the one in the middle position because then I can uh, grab the picture and move it to any place. Text wrap is the next important thing to know. If you can only remember two things, remember position and text wrap. Everything else is fluff and you can figure it out. But if you need help, go to the little um, question mark in the upper right hand corner to learn about anything in the program. Here I position the picture on the right side. I'm going to move down the left side of the picture toolbar to show you some of the things you can do with your picture. And then I will come back to the text wrap and explain the tools on the right side of the text wrap. Picture border will put a border around our picture. I can click on any color and choose the thickness of my frame by going to weight. Picture effects is the next tool. I'll briefly explain each one. To save us time experimenting, the preset tab has put together pre-combined combinations of different effects which work well together most of the time. As with any of the picture effects, you can preview the effect by resting the mouse over it before you click to select it. Shadows can be on the outside of the picture, on the inside, or in perspective around the picture. Here is an example of a shadow behind the picture. You can choose different types of reflection. Notice how the text moves away from the picture. You can choose different types of reflection. Notice how the text moves away from the picture. You can do soft edges by degrees. More options on the bottom of the drop-down box. Here are some examples of beveled edges. I could also add shadows, reflections, or glows to any of these effects as well. Last in th picture effects is a 3D rotation. Here is one example. Here is another example. Next I will show you some examples of picture layout. These are various graphic designs you can use with your picture. You can even put your own text in. Here is another example. Once I click right on the design, it will take me into a smart art tool. There I can change the box color. I can move the window to the left or the right, or I can change the size and shape of the box and the window. It really has quite a lot of options. These seven pictures in the middle are quick steps to picture effects that we have already seen. Soft edges, reflection, and shadow. Plus it has some frames you can put around your picture. If I click on the drop down arrow here, you will see a variety of effects and frames. I can alter these more by going to the Crop tool and change the shape or the frame of my picture. You can see all the different shapes you could choose. I'm going to put my tulip in a box. Skipping down to the left, we can choose from a variety of artistic effects. Here is one example from the drop-down box. Here I can change the color of my picture. I can fine-tune the color with the options at the bottom of the drop-down box. 
the sun icon makes your picture brighter, like the sun, or darker. You can choose from all these examples. After this tulip has gone through so many changes, let's say I want to go back to the original picture. By clicking on the reset picture, I will bring it back to its original form. Or if I wanted to go back layer by layer, I would go to these two arrow keys to toggle backwards to undo or forwards to redo to get the picture I like. I can also change the picture to a totally different one by clicking on the change picture. It will keep the same size and format as the previous picture. Compress picture is what you would click on if you wanted to compress the picture to say send it as an email. If you wanted to get rid of the picture altogether, or if you accidentally brought up a double, you can right click on the picture to bring up the box and click cut. Let's say now that we don't want the red background, we just want the tulip. So I'm going to go to the remove background, pull out the little white frame that surrounds the part of the picture that you want to keep. like this, then left click outside of the picture. Again, there it is. I want to show you one more thing and remove background. Say I want to remove the background, but I want to keep this one leaf along with the flower. When I click remove background, it brings me to this screen. I then can click on mark areas to keep and it will bring up a tiny pencil. I will draw roughly around the leaf. The program will catch the actual shape. I would do the same procedure if I wanted to delete a part of the selected picture or if I changed my mind I could delete the part I just selected or discard all changes or keep all changes. Here is the finished product. I can also enlarge that and change the color. Now we're going back to the second important part, text wrap. This is how text wraps around the picture. Most of the time you will choose square or tight. This is a square wrap. This is the top and bottom wrap. The top and bottom wrap. This is picture behind the text. If I had three or more layers, I could send my picture backwards or forwards, one layer at a time, or move it up and down from the selection pane. My tulip is now in tight wrap, but I have two words out here that I don't want here. So to send them back to the right side of the picture, I want to click on Edit Wrap Points. I grab a little square and pull out the size of the picture box to the left, which crowds out the two words I don't want, and sends them back to the right side. Here is the cropping tool. Click on the picture and adjust the little slashes on the picture to where you want it. Click outside the box and there is your finished product. We are now going to our file to get a picture. We do that by going to the Insert tab and clicking here on Picture, and the program goes to your file box, and you find the picture you want and click on Insert. Going back to the Crop tab, say I didn't want a rectangle, I wanted an oval. I can crop to shape, I can choose the oval, and you can see the finished product. I can also click on aspect ratio to choose a portion of the picture. I might choose portrait to select the children in the middle of the picture. Or landscape if I were going to choose the whole family. Here's an important tip. Anytime you only want part of the picture, crop it first and then crop it to shape second. Here's a picture of the mother enlarged. There's another thing I wanted to bring out. Back in the Home tab, notice the text it, on the left side of the picture is irregular. That is because my text is set on left justified. So everything on the left is irregular, is even, and the right side is irregular. 
To fix this, select the text and choose Right and Left Justified. Then the text will be equal distance from the picture. To rotate or tilt a picture, go to the Rotate tab, grab the green circle above the picture with your mouse, and turn to the desired position. I could also just click on Flip Vertical or Horizontal and so forth. Here I have made three separate objects, a circle, star, and a triangle. I want to move them around my text as one object. Right now I have to move each one separately. To move them as a group, click Shift and left mouse key at the same time on each object. You can see the little square boxes around each object. Then click Group and then you can move all three objects together as one object. I can also ungroup them if I change my mind. The Align tab works the same way as the Group tab, only instead of grouping it aligns two or more objects at the same time. Simply hit Shift and left mouse key to select all your objects and then go to the Align tab and choose your command. Here I have chosen vertically and you can have other choices as well. I'm sure you all have great ideas on how we can use this program, but in case you don't, here are some possibilities. You could make name tags for a family reunion with a picture of the ancestor you descended from, maybe a different color for each line of the family. Your name would go where the white letters are. To make multiple duplicate images, hold down Control and Alt buttons at the same time while dragging the image with the left mouse button and then releasing. You can make posters and flyers or enhance a school report. The clip art has a selection of backgrounds and borders that make it really easy. How about awesome handouts for all the different auxiliaries of the church and classes we are all involved in? Of course, how precious those family stories and journals are. Pictures would bring them to life and make them forever memorable. Put a picture of your ancestor in their story and maybe a picture of their home or their hobbies or things they loved or whatever enhances their story. Maybe you don't have a picture of your ancestors, but you could put a picture of the climate, or a map where they lived, or a ship if they came from overseas. Did they have to clear land to build a house or plant crops? Get your children and grandchildren interested in family history by reading these stories of their ancestors and finding an appropriate picture to bring these stories to life. Even if you can't find any pictures to go with your story, a picture on the page just makes everything more fun to read. Pictures add a whole other dimension to whatever message you want to communicate. So, get inspired. Unleash your creativity. But most of all, have fun adding pictures to a Word document.